All right, and uh, our discussion uh, this hour is drawn from that story, the latest allegations Donald Trump is uh, making, and this time against his predecessor, Barack Obama. And joining me in studio now is uh, Tom Maliti. He is an analyst uh, when it comes to matters world affairs. Thank you very much, Tom, for coming in. And um, from a president, Donald Trump continues to be Donald Trump, but this latest allegation seem to be very grave. D does it hold any water? Thank you for having me on, on your program. Um, it is a grave allegation, but unfortunately it comes from an individual who now, over time, has shown that even when he is now president mm -hmm. and has the advantages of the office of the president, still makes allegations without uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. What has happened since he made the allegation on Twitter is the person who served as the director of national intelligence, yeah. and this is the individual who coordinates intelligence across a variety of intelligence mm -hmm. agencies, mm -hmm. came out and said, during the election period, they did not conduct any wiretaps mm -hmm. on uh, Donald Trump and his campaign, and specifically uh, Donald Trump's campaign headquarters, mm -hmm. which was in Trump mm -hmm. Tower in New York. And again, the FBI director is quoted by newspapers in the US saying that uh, the, the FBI also was not conducting any such uh, investigation, which is significant because the FBI and other intelligence agencies mm -hmm. were conducting investigations into whether there was Russian interference, manipulation yeah. of some form in the US election. Mm -hmm. And they did reach a conclusion that there was a Russian attempt to uh, manipulate the US elections, not manipulate the actual vote counting and so on, but mm -hmm. manipulate people's perceptions, mm -hmm. people's views, um, create uh, doubts about uh, Donald Trump's rival, mm -hmm. uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Um, so that, at least, the intelligence agencies are clear on. Anything else, they're not clear on. Mm -hmm. um, and this allegation follows, and it seems to, if one was to look at the politics of it, it seems yeah. to be an attempt by Donald Trump to deflect attention away from yeah. allegations that individuals either linked to his campaign or directly involved in his campaign had contacts with Russian diplomats, former Russian spies, Russian businessmen who are linked to the Russian government, mm -hmm. and so on, during the campaign period. Now, so far, the reporting on those contacts has not been clear about what was mm -hmm. discussed, mm -hmm. with the exception of the person who used to serve as a national security advisor, Michael Flynn, mm -hmm. who initially denied that he had ever had any contact with, the, for, in, for instance, the Russian ambassador to the yeah. U.S., and then it emerged he actually did have two meetings. But more importantly, at those meetings, he did discuss U.S. sanctions against Russia in relation to what is happening in the Ukraine. And this was serious because the vice president went out publicly yeah. to say that, you know, there were, the, the Trump campaign had not taken a position on the, mm -hmm. on the sanctions before taking office. And yet this individual, who was a security advisor mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. did take this stand. With everything that is happening, what you've just explained, is Donald Trump seen to be clutching at straws now? With his head now in the mud, everything that is happening around him? Well, he, he seems to think that he can use former President Barack Obama as a punching bag. At least that's what the tweets seem to suggest. Mm -hmm. Whether he'll succeed in that, that's a different matter. Whether this will continue, that is a different matter. Um, whether now more sober, level-headed minds yeah. will be able to reach to him and say, uh, Mr. President, we think that this matter should not be pursued further. We think that this is a bad line because it, it, it will lead to all sorts of unnecessary scrutiny, mm -hmm. further scrutiny of the White House. Because Trump not only accused uh, the Obama, Obama administration of wiretapping his, his, his uh, building, but went further to characterize it along in terms of Watergate, mm -hmm. in terms of McCarthyism, yeah. which are very painful and very traumatic period times in American history. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is still tweeting for himself, and um, he's using his Twitter in a way no other president in the U.S. has used it. What kind of presidency are people of the United States looking at? This is a president who uh, last week attacked the media. Now he's attacking the former president. He seems to be attacking everyone, and on Twitter, which is unheard of. 
Exactly. And, 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 and this, this, this is why, for instance, outside the U.S., there's a lot of nervousness. In the U.S., it depends on where you, where you stand in terms of the politics of, of the U.S. So if you didn't vote for Trump, him tweeting, and not just tweeting on, on tweeting public statements he has made, but tweeting opinions, views about anything and everything, uh, is unacceptable. But if you're a Trump supporter, there are those who take the view that, hey, look, guy, you need to relax. Now you're the president. Don't worry. You're in office. There's no need to be uh, doubtful about that fact. The, <laughs> yeah, the, you the already tweeting, are president. The tweeting suggests that you, you don't even know whether you're in office or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are those who are like, yeah, we like the guy. I mean, he's telling it as it is. This is, this is how he campaigned. Um, this is what he, he told us he was going to do, that he's going to change the way Washington works. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways Washington works is you measure your words, you be careful about what you say in public, you use whatever um, op options and channels are open to you to make sure that you get the best inf information possible yeah. before you actually go out and say anything. Mm -hmm. And you know they're like, well, he's, no, he's not doing that, and that's what he said you'd do. You, mm -hmm. you'd, do things that are not the Washington way. Could it be his way of dealing with the pressure of the office? Probably he went in not knowing what it will involve and uh, with him as the head of state now, states actually, uh, he has so much pressure that his way of dealing with is divert attention to different quarters. Well, the tweeting is, is, is part of his character. Mm. That, that's part of it's just who, who he is. is. Um, it's part of him seeking attention. It's part of him wanting to be the center of attention. Um, the, the other side of, or the way the White House is operating now, where you know different people who are observing the White House are saying that there are at least two or three centers of influence within the White House. Mm -hmm. They attribute that to Donald Trump's uh, style of management before he joined politics, mm -hmm. where even in his businesses he deliberately played, you know, different people in his office against each other. Yeah. Um, and and the, the aim there was to get the best possible deal. The aim there was just to make sure that people know who's boss kind of thing. There are different things at work. Yeah. And he's, he's taken that to the White House. How is that working out for him? Uh, people just look at it as chaotic. <laughs> um, foreign governments are looking at it and wondering, okay, so are we to, are we to believe what we see on Twitter? Yeah. Are we to believe what the Secretary of State, who's the chief US diplomat, mm -hmm. When he comes to visit wherever we are, mm -hmm. are we to believe the vice president because mm -hmm. the vice president was in Brussels to meet with uh, members of uh, the NATO alliance? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's still confusing. From, from, from a foreign perspective, mm -hmm. there's still questions. To, there's still questions. Mm -hmm. And now what is, what, is, what is challenging to Trump is mm -hmm. he is finding it difficult to be able to travel abroad. Mm -hmm. He was scheduled to go to, the, uh, to Britain. There's a, there's a petition presented to the parliament mm -hmm. saying we don't want Trump yeah. in this country. It was debated in parliament. It's been debated at the Lord, uh, uh, House of Lords. And there seems to be a sense that, okay, maybe now is not a good time for Trump to visit mm -hmm. Britain. Mm -hmm. And if that actually comes to be, if that is confirmed officially, then this would be unprecedented because Britain and the U.S. have had a long-standing, what they call a special relationship. Yeah. Talking about relationships, the Russia question has dogged Donald Trump through the campaign period and now that his president, with everything that is happening, the allegations that is being made, the, pro, the con congressional probe into Russia's um, role in the U.S. elections last year, what, how do you analyze the relationship between the U.S. and Russia? And with all that is going on, how would, how would this affect the relationship? It will affect the relationship in the sense that uh, candidate Donald Trump said that if he were to be elected president, he would seek ways of improving relations with Russia. Mm -hmm. And now because he's gotten embroiled in this question around who in his campaign team, who in his ad administration as we speak, has had contacts with Russians and what those contacts were and what, what, they, what they discussed, mm -hmm. it now takes his energy and his attention away from how can I now improve relations with Russia to dealing with this domestic crisis. Mm -hmm. So 
let's just take a look at some months from now. It is the fourth month, uh, Donald Trump as president. Last month, there were analyses of three months into the presidency. How does this look like for him? Going forward, with the, all that is happening, with the Trump being Trump, what does this mean for the people of U.S.? Protests are still ongoing. Well, th those who object to the things that Donald Trump stands for or the things that Donald Trump has done, mm -hmm. We'll continue protesting, and, and, and they are now thinking through how they can organize better. Mm -hmm. um, just as, as one example, the Mexican... All right. All right, all right, we'll get back to that point. Just uh, hold on for a moment. 